Hey, what's going on? Nick Unsworth here. You're watching Life on Fire TV. We've got a very special guest, my main man, AJ Amix, and uh, he's going to crush a Twitter training because Twitter is all about not only following and unfollowing and getting people to follow you, but he's going to teach how we can actually create leads with Twitter and customers fired up. Hey, what's going on? Nick Unsworth here, and I'm a kick business coach and I'm on an absolute mission to help you find your purpose in life, to help you love what you do for work every single day, to help you be the rock star that you are meant to be, to make more money than you ever thought was possible, and to have more time freedom so you can actually enjoy the life that you're living. I'm here to help you set your life on fire. All right, we're back. My man, AJ, up, welcome to the show. I never know if you're gonna explode or not explode. I'm yeah. like, so I'm like, wait, delay. You ever do explosion. like the, the jellyfish <laughs> thing? What's your favorite handshake, Eric? I was talking to them, but Eric, what are we doing here? What are we doing? What are, what's going on right now? That's the Linda, <laughs> dude. So, so the camera guy, Eric, who you may have seen on a recent episode of Life on Fire TV, he came out from under the kimono. And, uh, and not only does he have amazing skills with video, but he also has a great dead fish handshake. Nice. Nice. <laughs> That's my favorite type. It's a good, it's a heck of a type. It just really impresses people at yeah. networking events. It's a way to network and grow rich. <laughs> I actually did a dead fish, um, and it was a very influential, you know, speaker, and I did a full dead fish, and I literally, like, like, couldn't get away from his hand, and I, like, snapped it back, and I went right back in, and he looked at me so weird, and I'm like... Sorry, man, just didn't want to dead fish you. And he was just like, kept walking away. <laughs> anyway, so we're fired up for today because this training is on dead fish handshakes and <laughs> Twitter. And because, um, so we got AJ. I'll give a quick little backstory. And we're going to highlight this guy's life as an entrepreneur because it's awesome. This guy's living a life on fire. But also, um, he's got some phenomenal strategies. We hired AJ to work with us with Life on Fire. AJ is also a Firestarter Elite client. That's our highest level. It's 3K per month. And let's start with that before we dive into some of your backstory. So tell these guys just about how we met and uh, then we'll dive into a little bit about you know what's happened since. Yeah, so funny story in how we met because it actually vicariously met through Twitter. But see, because the whole deal is I connected with Ian Darley. Some of you guys know, may know the good old Ian Darley. And so I connected with Ian like two years ago. Mm -hmm. And then we became friends. We went through some like programs together. I needed an accountability partner yeah. for a program. So I was like, hey, dude, you want to do this? Even though he's yeah. like across the ocean. He yeah, he's out in the UK. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we became good friends. We Skyped it up. And then he hired you. Yep. You got him good results. Yep. And I was in like that coach search. And I like was trying to reach out to people, find yeah. a person that was a good fit for me. And so I reached out to you. And then, like a glove. <laughs> like a glove. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. And, and Ian, just want to say what's up to Ian Darley. That was a, a crazy wild yeah. story. I mean, the guy literally can create change for people and like transformation and cure phobias and have breakthroughs. And, you know, financially wasn't where he wanted to be. And just in a really fast period of time, like really about 30, 40 days, helped him, you know, make some fast moves. And that's what it's about. You know, you don't hire someone. You don't buy this guy's course and, you know, work with AJ or hire AJ unless you're planning on making more money, right? And living a better quality life. And so that's our whole mission here with Life on Fire is to help you not only love what you do, which is why I love this guy, because he's on the exact same mission of helping you live your life on fire, but it's also all about how to get there faster. And so we're going to dive into Twitter strategies. You know, we hired AJ for us, which has been awesome. I mean, we're only, what, 30 days in? Yeah, a little less than 30 days A little days less in. than 30 days in. And every Tuesday we get our stats and numbers from him, and it's awesome. We're getting tons of action on Twitter. Um, and, you know, quite frankly, um, it's all being done for us. And yeah, you're, and you're like crushing it. hundreds of thousands of uh, eyeballs. Hundreds of thousands of eyeballs. That's what stats say. Yeah, it's all stats, baby. All stats. Data. And, and so I think what's cool, so we started working together. I think um, this is something I think is just awesome about, you know, getting to know you and, you know, came in as a fire starter at the $500 level. And, uh, and, and, and what did you say when you first got rolling? I was like, dude, I think I want to go ahead and enroll an elite, but here's the, here's the caveat. I'm going to come in at 500 and then we have to hit this goal, this 10,000 goal in 30 days, and then we'll all up it. So yeah. you helped me hit that goal in 30 days, and then I kept my part of the deal and then yeah. up the bar. So how cool is that? I just think that that's awesome. You know, it's like seeing the value in coaching, right? And I've got, you know, coach myself. I've got multiple coaches. And at the end of the day, it's like coming on board 
and at the $500 level knowing that you're like, I'm going to do it, let's perform together and bump up to that $3,000 level. And since then, just to paint a picture of where this is all heading, is that at the $3,000 level, we're basically partnering up. And what happens at that level is that we spent the whole day today, we call it a VIP day, so we flew into San Diego. We spent the whole day together planning, so we've got a really awesome plan. And we'd like to zoom out and look from a 12-month plan down, but guys, that's sometimes that's too much. You know, to plan 12 months out, I mean, how much does life change, right? So we really focused on the most important task at hand is what's gonna happen the following month for 30 days, what's gonna happen the month after that for 30 days. And then we do have some high-level nuggets about you writing a book, you know, and uh, you know, starting your podcast and all kinds of things in there. And the plan is that soon, I mean, this webinar is gonna be upon us soon where it's really exciting that this guy's gonna be coming on, we're you know, doing a course together, and I will definitely share that information with you guys here today. But you know, as you know, he's getting results for us, you know, we want to share this guy with, with you guys, you know, share, share you with our network. And uh, so we're going to have a rocking, rocking training for you guys coming up to a live webinar with this guy. So you're watching this now. It's cool. Love podcasts. But when you hear our training live or AJ's training live, it's a whole different ballgame. We're able to answer your questions and help even more. So that is called the website? Tweetforprofits.com. Tweetforprofits.com. So just bookmark that. We're going to come back to explain why that's going to be awesome, but that's something that you don't want to miss because that right there is going to help you get there faster. And that's what this is about. So before we go too far down that path, I do want to also um, dive into do a little bit about your background. So tell us about your experience as a rock star. Well, I dude, think it's just so cool. There was this one time I was in, in Illinois. We played this big festival called Cornerstone Festivals, like the largest Christian rock festival at the mm -hmm. time. There was like 20,000 people there. And so... Um, and aren't you Jewish though? Yeah, I'm actually... I'm kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> kidding. <laughs> His face is great. Well, I was making a joke and then it turned on me and I'm like, oh, crap, he is Jewish. <laughs> I know. So awesome. <laughs> Okay, back. <laughs> so there's this time we, we like literally drove from uh, Dallas. We played at Oklahoma, there in Tulsa. And we drove all the way to Bushnell, and we had to like get in that morning. But we got there like 3 a.m. and we're all tired, and so we're pulling our van and our trailer at the time. We, this is before we had the tour bus. Yeah. And so we went there, and we um we I was tired, so I pulled out an air mattress, yeah. put it next to the van in a parking spot. Yeah. And I slept on the Walmart parking lot on an air mattress. And I got woke up by the parking lot trash guy yeah. like at six in the morning. And he's like, shh, shh, shh. And he's like, uh, hey, uh, sorry, I don't mean to wake you up. I'm really sorry to wake you up here. Like he was like, like I, it was a, a hindrance very to cordial. waking me. Yeah. yeah, he was very nice. And he's like, just let me know, the guests can't sleep in the parking lot past seven a.m. So it's okay. Makes sense. So just you know, if you're tired, Makes sense. <laughs> you can sleep in the Walmart parking lot apparently in an air mattress. You know, up to seven a.m. But then you gotta get. You gotta go. So, you know, and and so as a so as a musician, I mean, so you're in that environment because you're traveling around the road. Um, I mean, did you guys like tell us about that? You know, so you have a passion for music. I mean, yeah. did you guys, um, you know, anything stick or how to go? I mean, it was just your passion. You're going towards it. Yeah. Or? So the whole passion was really like at that time. I thought like I had this message of I mm. want people to pursue their passion. So many yeah. times in America. I think mostly in America, we're told like as children, we have to go to college to have a degree, to then yeah. have a good job, to then live this life on fire. Sure. Which I've learned is pretty much garbage. Like mm -hmm. we can do whatever we want to do. Yeah. We're all uniquely gifted with certain skill sets as long as we then go and equip ourselves with the skill sets to back up whatever our sure. message is. So yeah. if for some people, they want to be a doctor, then you do have to go down the college route. Yeah. Or if you want to be an attorney or a lawyer, something that needs a piece of paper, you have to go down that route. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to back yeah. up the skill sets. But let's say if you want to be a welder. There's nothing wrong with being a welder. Maybe your passion is welding two sure. pieces of metal it's together. It's like a form of art. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And therefore, you don't need to go get a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of Science to yeah. be a welder. Why don't you go to the tech school of welding? Or why don't yeah. you go intern and apprentice for yeah. somebody who's doing that and learn from them? That's why, for me, the coaching industry is so awesome. Mm. Go hire the coaches who are living, what not just preaching, but yeah. they're living what you want. They have the business yeah. models that you want. Yeah. You pay them, you learn, it shortens your learning gap. That's so true. I mean, I think about, um, this is kind of funny. I think this is goes alludes to the power of branding. But as, you know, when to establish and create your brand, you know, one of the coolest things is, you know, if, if, I'm, life, if, life, if I'm life on fire and I'm a business coach, it's like I have to live that brand because who wants to hire a business coach that doesn't have a fun life? Yeah. So 
it's awesome that I actually, because of the brand, I have to actually live it in a way that it's going to be a lot of fun. And that's, you know, same thing for you Absolutely. as a business coach and as a Twitter marketing expert. I mean, um, I think what's awesome is that you look at, you know, this guy's a business coach as well. He can help people from all walks of life, you know, figure out purpose, drill down, get to that life on fire. And actually, you are one of our, you know, on, on the roster for life on exactly. fire too. Our clients get to get, get yeah. access to, to AJ. And you're getting some ridiculous feedback, by the way. Sweet. Awesome, Sweet. awesome like feedback. It. And so the cool thing is that it's, you know, taking something like coaching and for you to have an amazing yeah. lifestyle, it's almost like you owe that to your clients. Absolutely. You know, because you're walking the walk. And that's, you know, who wants to hire a business coach that is doesn't have time for anything, yeah. you know? And so I just think overall that's just the power of a brand. Whether, you know, for us it's Life on Fire, for you guys, it, you know, it's whatever you know, you're into or whatever your passion is. But if you can create a brand that's bigger than you and have to live up to it. Absolutely. I think it comes back to like, you know, you talked about story, mm -hmm. stance, strategy. We're going to get into yep. some strategy. But like once you figure out what your stance is, yep. then it's your job to model that. Like all your images on Facebook should model that. All your images yep. on Instagram should model that. Come yep. back to Twitter, everything you tweet about should model that stance. And all of your content is what revolves around that stance and that becomes like your content leg. I think this is a great way, time to, to tie in purpose. You know, yeah. so so guys, what, you know, what we're always trying to do is is bring back the four pillars of life on fire. So mm -hmm. that's mindset, marketing, networking, and purpose. Four pillars for life on fire. So let's dive into purpose. So basically, um, you know, stance. I mean, yeah. your stance or your mission, your movement, that really is what that's about. Absolutely. So how do you look at um, your purpose and then maybe some tips for you know for them about how they can also think about uncovering and figuring out what their purpose yeah. is. So I feel like my purpose is one of these people who's inspiring people to pursue their passions and then equipping them with the skill sets to pull it off. Because mm -hmm. it's great to feel all rah rah and feel all hyped up to go kill stuff and crush stuff. But then mm -hmm. if you don't have the skill sets to back it up, then it's, it's kind of hard to, yeah. to pull it off. So I feel like that's my my why. That's what drives mm -hmm. me is to show people it's possible, right? Yeah. But then how to get to it. For me, it came from losing everything. I mean, losing everything except my health and then being forced to ask those deeper questions, which is, why in the yeah. world am I here, right? And I remember specifically, I was reading uh, Awaken the Giant by Tony Robbins. I call him mm -hmm. T-Row. I don't know why, like we're homeless. T-Row. Good old T-Row, you know, little gangsta. Yeah, he's little. <laughs> yeah, he's just tiny. So I was reading T-Row, Awaken the Giant Within, and mm -hmm. I was going through and implementing, and I remember like fast forwarding, because this is March 2010, fast forwarding, yeah. I remember being in a deer blind, because I'm from Texas, we hunt, come on. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in a deer blind by myself, and at this point I was like completely emotionally... Hey, what is that, a deer blind? A deer blind, okay. So <laughs> <laughs> caveat, side tangent, a deer blind is like you have a box and it's sitting usually like for ours. No, oh. um, on a platform, like eight okay. foot in the air. And yeah. then it, you sit in it, and then you watch the little creatures come, and you know, you do your get thing. Em. You get them. You get them. <laughs> you just get them. Man, what different worlds we live in. I know, I know. But hey, on the side note, we eat that. Like, it's what feeds us, it's free range, it's healthy. Hey. And these people who don't like hunting are like, I know, he came ah. over this morning, and, and uh, you know, you don't kill what you eat. <laughs> <laughs> like you live on an ocean. There's food out there. Get to work, son. No, no, I didn't spear anything today, but we can. And maybe that'll be the back half of this interview. We're out like AJ just <laughs> running around in skins, just skinning it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're like, what are we gonna wear for this? And then um, the video dude Eric was just like, skins, bro. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> I told him we had to reserve that for hump day Q and A. <laughs> yeah. True. True. All right. So bring us back to. Um, so you're in the deer blind, the box. Yeah. You just got a squirrel <laughs> and purpose and you're reading Awaken yeah. the Giant. So I, I had it and so I was sitting there and I was, I was meditating. I was just sitting there like this, just breathing, just, just breathing, being very relaxed. Yep. And I kept asking, you know, what is my purpose of existence? What is my purpose of existence? And I kind of had this experience and I, I'm kind of wooey a little bit, like this little out of body yep. experience from being in this meditative state. Sure. And it was like this gentle voice said, to inspire millions. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. that's great. To do what? And I'm like, mm -hmm. to inspire millions to pursue their passions. I'm like, hmm. Oh. And then it felt congruent with me. It felt good. So ever since then, that's just kind of been everything that I've been doing is allowing my content and my strategy. Mm -hmm. Does it meet that mission? Does it, is this inspiring people to do what they feel called to do in the world? Is this action empowering somebody to be that bridge for the person they feel yeah. that they're called to lead? Because I feel like each one of us 
we're called to be that bridge for somebody. Yeah. So therefore, we either choose to accept that opportunity or we say, no, that's, that's too much. And then we allow those people who are, who are literally or fiending for our message to literally yeah. just be fallen off and fall into the raging waters beneath us and swept into the sea of mediocrity of life. Sea of mediocrity of life. It's so true, though. I mean, how many times in life do we think that, yeah. you know, we're settling, you know, that we're not living up to what it is that we're capable of or our potential or our God-given purpose, if you believe in God? Or So I think that's awesome, man. Just kudos to you for, but like, I, I just, I wish for everyone to take that time, you yeah. know, whether you're, you know, in a hardship, which yep. you were, in my case, for, you know, my stories, I was in a hardship, but to really reflect and think about, you know, what is that stance for you, you know, and and, you know, to get there, is it, you know, uh, meditating on it? Is it thinking of what's your purpose? You know, what am I here for? What, mm -hmm. you know, what's my calling? What's my passion? You know, uh, we, we actually have, uh, you know, a couple episodes on purpose. So definitely drill down on those if, if you need to. So once you've identified that, how did that impact you? I mean, it sounds like you've been living up to that. Every, it's guiding your decisions. And then tell us about how you got into Twitter, you know, and how this became one of your main tools for business. Mm -hmm. So how I got on Twitter was we like go back in the time zone. I bought a course from Mike Koenig, Social mm -hmm. Media Marketing Machines. This is like also, 2000. Number five affiliate for that. 10 or 11? 11? I think it's 2011. I think it was 11. Yeah, yeah. I think it was 11. Yeah. And so I, I watched the launch sequence. And I was like, yeah. this is like, because I wanted, like I was praying for like a business in a box at this time because I had that's like exactly stuff, what he marketed. And yeah, that's yeah. what it was. I was like, yes, an answer from the heavens. Boom. Yeah, this it was is there in my inbox. Yeah. And so I, it came to the price. It was like three grand, I think. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to do this. Cause I had like 500 bucks. That's all I had. And I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'll just finance it. I'll yeah. pay the six payments. And I will either come up with the $500 a month or I'll die. Like, that was like that was the yeah. only other option right, yeah. for me. So I joined the Chamber of Commerce, bought the product, went through it, devoured it, joined yeah. the Chamber of Commerce, got my first $2,500 client. And so that's what introduced me like into Facebook. I'm going to tell them about that tomorrow. That's yeah, awesome. Of how it works. And then yeah. so if we fast forward, it was mostly like Facebook was like the thing, the place to sure. hang out, build relationships. It was great. But as things have changed and evolved, I always just kind of used Twitter. Mm -hmm. And then I found for me that it was easier for me to connect with people in relationships like Ian and then into you sure. and then get different clients just from me connecting because yeah. like Twitter's like, I mean, uh, Facebook, if you connect with somebody, they're like, you don't know me. Why are you talking to me? You know my friend. You know, like, I don't yeah. know why they're like Italian mob on Facebook, but apparently they, they are. But like, on but like on Twitter, they're like, it's like this big party, this big bar. And it's like, yeah. you just like walk into this party room and then you overhear a conversation. You can just hop into the conversation. Like, yeah, come on, join the conversation. Yeah, yeah let's get down. And like everybody's happy. And everyone's like, cool about it. Yeah, everybody's cool yeah. about it. And then like. There's not like the click where they give you like the look like yeah. that. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You know, so the Facebook is that, and Twitter. So Twitter's just more open, just yeah. open for the for the party. So what's interesting is I think that you know that you're kind of speaking to the mindset yep. of Facebook and Twitter. So like sometimes we talk about mindset, we talk about techniques. I right. think, and this one I like. I like where we're heading with the mindset on how to market on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because like you literally, if we want some like tactical, tangible results for you guys right there, it's like go into the search bar on Twitter. Like there's a little search bar, bloop, put in some, let's say if you're doing like weight loss, like shout out to mm. Lena and Stacy, they're doing some stuff on weight loss. Go in there and type in how to lose weight. And guess what happens? Tweets in real time of people tweeting saying, I want to lose weight. I don't want to lose weight. Mm. I want to lose weight, but I want to eat a lot of food. I want to lose weight without movement. And so this is literally clients like right there that you could go and jump into the party scene and communicate send them an at reply and start the communication are they going to instantly become a customer probably not yeah. but you can go in there and have that connection right then and there right then and there and then after over time maybe you can guide them into your lead magnet you know if we come into platform sure. and um, that gives them the training and so you're training this person to transaction through your automated sequence there yeah or maybe they do want to schedule a call with you and then maybe that's an opportunity for you if, if it's a good fit for them to come in and play with you then. Okay, so so from a tactic standpoint, we'll drill down on marketing a little bit, but from a tactical standpoint, you can use the Twitter search yeah. and you can type in whatever it is that you do for work and that you can find your audience. Yep. So from a mindset perspective, um, you know, you highlighted the fact that it's different than Facebook, so Absolutely. you can search for conversations and jump in and that's not weird for people. Right. Um, on, from, from mindset, um, is there anything else to be aware of the way that you should think about Twitter? Is it, 
you know, I mean, obviously you can only 140 characters, but is there any other thing that comes to mind when I say mindset and think about Twitter and your yeah, work with so Twitter? I think like mindset, like within, if we look at like posting content mm -hmm. strategies, if we're on yep. Facebook, we can like write real long, you know, yep. and people say, okay, well, Twitter is 140 characters. Mm -hmm. and I think this is like the, the huge like stumbling block for a lot of people because they're mm -hmm. like, well, how do I condense my words to this? Like, how yeah. do I, people think, go into the bathroom, tweet it eating a brownie tweet. It doesn't, I mean, that is, there's no validity really in yeah. that. There could be as far as personal touch, but in the overall mm -hmm. grand scheme of things, there's no validity in that. So yeah. you have to figure out how can I create the content, whether this is a retweet, whether this is a quick tip, whether this is like a, it's like a literally a piece of content within 140 yeah. characters. So I would encourage people to go look at magazines, mm -hmm. like go to Barnes and Noble, go to Borders. Do they still exist in Borders? They still, I like that store. I wish they were still alive. I hope so, but. Anyway, go somewhere where there's magazines, okay? And mm -hmm. so you can look at the magazines, look at the headlines, and then start learning and training yourself how to write like a journalist, like literally mm. headlines. That's Headline. what I'm looking for. Headline. There we go. Okay. Headlines. So your mentality is, I mean, they're short and they're bite-sized. Yes. And so basically what you're saying is, is that if you're writing like a journalist yeah. and those are headlines, then all your really, your goal of the tweet then becomes, uh, to really to get them to click on the link within the, the tweet? Absolutely. Okay, so Absolutely. it's kind of like if you think about a headline, or excuse me, a subject line on an email, yes. your goal for the subject line is to get them to open it. Your goal on the copy in the email is to get them to click on the link. Once they get to that link, your goal on the page is then to have them take the action, maybe to enter their email or Absolutely. do something or to buy something. In your case, a, Twitter, a tweet is basically, you know, a headline like from a magazine. You get it. And you know, I'll never forget Evan Pagan, uh, one of my mentors, at his event, he literally would always be putting up um, examples of headlines from um, from old school advertising, yeah. Rolex's headlines and Mercedes from back mm -hmm. in the day, and and that really, you know, the the copy makes a, a huge difference. So yeah. cool. So we're gonna put ourselves in the shoes of like a journalist. We're gonna think about you know writing catchy headline style tweets to get people to go to your links. And then what about, you know, do you weave in content just about your day to personalize it? Yeah. So are you, from a mindset, are you, are you doing like, you know, 70% fun content, maybe you're sharing other people's stuff and 30% of the time you're putting in your links or tell us about the mix. Yeah. Of so I usually probably do like 95, 90 to 95% of the mm -hmm. time I'm doing like literally content. Okay. So when it comes back to my stance, mm -hmm. I figure out what am I standing for? Yep. And then how can I create the content around that stance? So for okay. me, I, I mean, I like I like health and fitness and weightlifting. So yep. I share some of that stuff. I love green smoothies, so I don't mm -hmm. want to be the green smoothie stuff. So maybe I'll go find Megan Ann if she has yep. you know recipes on Twitter. Then I would retweet and share those, right? Sure. Or I would share content based upon my blog, mm -hmm. and then like ten to five percent of the time, then it's personal. But okay. it's still not like, hey, I'm wearing, you know, uh, Converse shoes. Well, that's what I'm wearing today. Converse shoes yeah. today. I'd be like, hey, I'm hanging out with Nick Gunsworth and we're shooting video or something. Sure. Like it still ties back into the that overall stance. message. Exactly. Sure. Okay. Exactly. You know, okay. So it's like you can, you know, I, cause I think what's cool is like personalizing, it makes you human, you know, so if you're just out having fun or take a picture of something, Absolutely. you're living your life as normal is cool. And then so from a content perspective, you know, I, it's boils down to think about what is your main message or stance. So for me, it's like I want to have everything revolve around a life on fire. And so you've been helping us to create and curate and do and do the strategy. And so it's cool that you see that you're sharing other people's stuff. So tell us about the value and the benefit of sharing other people's stuff. And that kind of ties into networking, which is one yeah. of the pillars of a life on fire. So I think like as a content creator, we get hung up a mm. lot on like I have to create the content. And then we're like, I don't have time to create all the content. That means I got a blog sure. and I got to shoot video. But like with Twitter, and you can even do this on Facebook, but like with Twitter, mm -hmm. you can literally become like the hub, the curator sure. of that stance, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say if you wanted, to, like Social Media Examiner is a great example of this, sure. right? They literally curate all other types of people's content from all their guest blog posts, mm -hmm. but they are like that go-to source for social media marketing. Yeah. So each individual, you guys out there, how the question becomes, how can you become the hub or the go-to person for the content or for the stance or for the information that you want to stand for. And this goes across whatever your message is, your Twitter account needs to be like the hub that people say, oh, I want to go follow Nick Unsworth because mm -hmm. he's going to help me live my life on fire. I mean, we tweet about a bunch of stuff besides just marketing sure. because it's all about you know purpose and passion yeah. and meditation and green smoothies because all that is about life on fire. Over, it all rolls exactly. up. So, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Just cool. So it makes it a little bit more out. It all it all rolls back up to the stance, which yeah. is key. And then so 
Um, so you've got curating content. I think what's cool is that um, from a networking perspective, this is a really amazing thing because you know, people are always saying like, how'd you get in touch with so-and-so or how'd you get so-and-so on the show? And it's like, I used to always, for me anyway, I would reach out to them on social. Absolutely. You know, I mean, we, we have an opportunity to connect with people that never before you could ever have access to. Absolutely. Like you've got famous entrepreneurs on Twitter and online. You've got celebrities, you name it. Whoever is the big you know, guru in your industry, mm -hmm. they're all online, you know? Yeah. And so the cool thing is you can connect on Facebook, which I've done in the past. The great thing about Twitter is that that's readily available to you. Absolutely. So, so on that, you know, uh, give us some tips about networking, yeah. you know, and, and how would you go about doing that? Yeah, so even one of the things I do, like when I, if somebody gets a content calendar from mm -hmm. me, it says like one of the tweets is like promote somebody. Mm -hmm. And so we even do this for Life on Fire and for sure. you. I'm, and I think, who could we promote today? And sometimes it takes me a little time to think because yeah. I'm thinking like, who are the influencers that we want to be on their radar? Yeah. And, then I, and I don't promote them, like my intent is like, oh, I'm going to promote them because I want to be on their radar and I want something from them. My intent is like, I like what they're up to, like genuinely like what they're up to. Yeah. It would serve our audience. Yeah. It's a bonus that maybe they're an influencer and we could connect on a deeper level and maybe do some stuff in the future. Yeah. So I literally give them a, like a shout out, you know, like let's say Chris Throne has his Throne show. I love his podcast. Sure. So I'll be like, hey, um, hashtag entrepreneur, like hashtag entrepreneur. If you're not, if you're looking for a good podcast, make sure you're following at Blue Gino, mm -hmm. right? He has a great podcast. And it's because I genuinely like his podcast. I genuinely, it would serve my people. But yeah. at the same time, it's building that relationship. So if we come back to application, who are for you guys, who are the, the list of people that you want to connect with on your industry? I mean, are these podcasters? Are they life on fire? Do they have TV shows? Are these people who have stages? Like, make a list of who these people are. Like five or ten. Let's put a number on it. Find, let's, hell, let's do ten people. Find ten people and then go reach out and then throughout the week be promoting them. Like promote, say, hey, follow this person if you're looking for this type of information, or go follow this person and listen yeah. to their podcast or the blog. You know? Yeah. It, it all boils. I mean, every single time we do these, I mean, it comes back yeah. to giving first. Absolutely. But what I love about Twitter is that by giving, it's like click a button and then personalize it. So yep. it's like by you retweeting something from Gary Vaynerchuk over time, you can establish a relationship Absolutely. where it's like, oh, that's pretty cool that, you know, uh, you know, so if you ever reach out to Gary Vaynerchuk, it's like, oh, this dude's been, you know, retweeting my Absolutely. stuff for eight months, yeah. you know, and then even when you reach out, you might be giving again. Yep. You know, it's like we talked about um, a strategy uh, for AJ that I think is really going to be effective and cool is, is as you're getting started in your industry and you've got experience or expertise and you're building your brand. So for this guy as a Twitter marketing expert um, to go out, you know, to get influential clients is going to help him just rapidly grow his business. You know, so um, it's reaching out. Let's just say, for example, uh, who? Uh, let's see. Oh, a guy like John Asaraf. Right. You know, John Asaraf is phenomenal on Facebook, and you know, New York Times best-selling author. The guy has changed so many lives. I mean, you know, part of the, the book, The Secret, and the guy's just amazing, right? And so what's super cool is, you know, if you know, you found an opportunity by right. looking at his Twitter account and, you know, it I think the image the images have changed on Twitter, the Absolutely. background. And so you recognize that and there's an opportunity for you to just literally make him a new background image and send it to him. Not only that, but retweeting his stuff and yeah. just saying, like, hey man, I'd love to reach out. And you know, here's this custom design background that I thought would be really cool for you. Mm -hmm. And if you make that look amazing, like you did for ours, then it's like, sweet man, you know, thanks, dude. Yeah. And then for him to pick up John Asraf as a client and offer to do some stuff for free, and that foot in the door with the right influential client, we call it the anchor right. client strategy, can dramatically change your business. Right. You know, and I mean, I've done it. We've had tons of clients have done it, and it just it's it's the shortcut to success. And so Twitter. I mean, what's great is on that strategy is that that's giving you access to someone like that. Right. If you go to message John Asraf on Facebook, it's going to um, actually it charges you for him because I think he gets hit up so much, and it still goes to the other folder, so you can't really get to him <laughs> anyway. But to, on Twitter, you can. So at the end of the day, it comes down to you're giving first, Absolutely. you're sharing their content and retweeting. And I think if you're retweeting though, 
just keep in mind you want to you want to mention their name in there absolutely because otherwise you don't really get credit yeah yeah so tell yeah. us about that so you'd want to make sure that you're mentioning the name and you could also put a little period in front of the, the little at sign okay and that way not only will they be notified but it's showing their tweet to your your followers as well because like really? if you just give them without the period then it's just like a mention essentially oh, okay so if you do a little period thing so now not only are you mentioning them and say you know so they know but yeah. then you're also exposing their information to your audience. I never knew that. The little period secret. So you put a period, then the at sign, then their Twitter handle, and yep. then boom, it's going to share it to your audience, and, and they'll know that you shared it to your audience. Absolutely. Yep. And so that, um, okay. Now, wouldn't, if you're retweeting, isn't it sharing to the audience anyway, though? Well, well you know, the, usually, yes. Yeah. But the period thing allows both people uh, to see it. To, uh, okay, okay. All right. Cool, cool. Um, so that's, a, I think that from a networking perspective, it's just awesome. Like, there's no... I, I truly think that there's no better way to network online than, than Twitter. I agree. Um, so tell us about like direct messages. Does anyone read those things? So Is I, that, Would that yeah. be effective for networking? Yes and no. Okay. So yes, people read them. But let's say if you're one of the people that are still in 2011 and using yeah. Koenig stuff from 2011 with the little autoresponder yeah. tweet stuff, which a lot of people do. I hate those damn things. Because mm -hmm. like you follow somebody, then you automatically get a message like, hey, go for a free book, go here. Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, da, 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 you know what I'm talking so about? So as soon as you start following, you get a direct yeah, message. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I hate those things. You know, like yeah. use them for genuine conversation. So if you want to like reach out, do some, some you know, strategic looking at people, like, you, like you're drawn to somebody's profile, you click on it, you go to the website, you do your due diligence, you're like, hey, this person, you know, this person resonates with me. And then mm -hmm. you come back and you're like, I like this person. I think I could help this person this way. Sure. Then you send them a direct message, but your personal and say, hey, I checked out your website. I love the clean look of it. I like this blog post. You know, what do you have going on in your world? Or what are you working on in your world? Mm -hmm. And open up that conversation. Absolutely. I mean, for me, I've been on podcasts just yeah. because I DM'd somebody that I was like, hmm, this person's interesting. Sure. Like their profile jumped out at me. I trusted my gut feeling on that. Yeah. I dove deeper, did my due diligence. Yeah. And then I reached out through a conversation. Very cool. So if it's someone that's influential or someone that could be a good, a good networking synergy, yeah. you know, so for a guy like AJ, who's, you know, starting a podcast soon, reaching out, connecting with influential people, and then genuinely, absolutely, key being genuinely yes. having that direct message, plus sharing their content, you're mentioning each other going back and forth. I think that's super cool. So boom. So I think, you know, mindset that's networking. Tell us about just, if we zoom out, just would we'll flip back to mindset, like one if you think about, you know, for someone that's thinking to themselves, I just don't have the time. You know, I'm busy with what I'm doing or I have a podcast or I've got a business and I don't have, I feel like I don't have enough time for all this stuff. What's your, um, we'll get to what's your advice as far yeah, as how yeah. to manage it fast, but I want to really drive home. Why is all of this worth it? So give us like a high level, like here's why you want to do Twitter, yeah. you know, and what's possible for these guys. So at the end of the day, it's all about relationships. Mm -hmm. Like whether Al Gore chooses to like shut down the internet or not. Like at the end of the Al day, <laughs> he didn't invent the internet. But, really? You know, I don't know. I, I saw a tweet that he did. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. But anyway, it all comes back to relationships. Like mm -hmm. relationships are going to always be the lifeblood of business. Yeah. And at currently, I think it's the easiest way to build relationships is with Twitter. Mm. That would be like my my advice to somebody. It's like, hey, if you want to build relationships with people, use Twitter. Can cool. you do it? For Facebook and tape it a you know deeper level, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But as far as just connecting with people and opening up the door for that conversation, yep. and then pulling them into a Skype conversation, or then pulling them okay. to an email, or then pulling them into a longer form of private message on Facebook or something, yep. like Twitter is like the, the connection point, the fastest, the fastest easiest way to absolutely. do that. Absolutely. And then at a high level, those connections can be for anything from joint ventures. If you do yeah. online marketing, it could be getting on a podcast could be a cross promotion. Yeah. And so, I mean, what's cool is like those types of connections. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the reason we have one of the pillars for Life on Fire be networking is because those relationships and those types of connections are what great businesses yeah. are built well, on. And another like mindset networking yeah. tip, you know, you could create a list on Twitter yep. and let, cause in the newsfeed gets kind of crazy on Twitter. Yep. So you could create a list and call it like the inner circle mm -hmm. or my homeboys or something like, I'd probably say like the inner circle. Yep. And then you add those influential people to that sure. list. Don't say like social media marketing experts or business experts because 
mindset, you're positioning yourself lower than these people. Mm. But if you call them my inner circle and you added them to the list, it's like now you're on the equal playing field, mm. right? Huge. Yeah. And so now you're, but then you, that list, you could monitor just that list of those influencers see what's going on. and then be able to connect with them, respond to them a little, you know, okay. a little bit more. And that's, and, and so that's how you would most effectively manage your feed. Is, yeah. is put people in lists and Absolutely. then do you use any any clients to manage your feed or what would you recommend on the most efficient way for you to consume what's happening in your sphere on Twitter? Yeah, so you, again, you can come back to the inner circle and yep. if, like if you say for me, social media marketing, I could say inner circle and just mm -hmm. add all the social media marketing experts or mm -hmm. gurus into that list. They're my homeboys, they're my peeps, they're my home sisters yep. and we're all like there together. And okay. then maybe I would call I don't know, for potential prospects, maybe I would call them something like, um, I don't know what I would call them actually off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. I'd come with, I know, blank. Something Sorry. I would call them like the, the, the deer bin. What was it called? <laughs> the deer blind. The yeah. deer blind. The deer blind. Deer deep. blinds. <laughs> um, so, so, but from like a user standpoint, it's fastest for you. So if you make a couple lists, you've got like maybe prospects, you've got inner circle, which could be, you know, contacts, people you want to have Absolutely. on your podcast or Absolutely. people that you want to, network with and so so basically from a user because I'm, I'm trying to speak if, if you're not big into Twitter this is cool could be a good reason to get on it so it's for connections but also um, you know you can you can manage it by looking at lists Absolutely. and so that's an easy way for you to be able to see what's going on and make it manageable fast yeah like I know it sounds weird I don't ever watch the news ever mm -hmm. most of my news comes from Twitter yeah like, I know what's trending I know what's breaking I know what's going on sure you know that's, that's a, I remember from, um, I think it was like a social nomics video back in the day. It was like, you know, like in the, in back in the day, then you used to have to like seek out the news, you know, and now yeah. it finds us. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Like it's really cool. So, um, all right. So I am also just zooming up a little higher as far as just what's possible. So it sounds like it's, it's, what's possible on Twitter is, all right, so we can create great connections. I think we'd all agree. You know, it's not what we know, it's who we know. And having connections, it's like the bigger your Rolodex, the bigger your income. And I think just having a lot of relationships, it's just life is so much more fun. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you go to a different city, you know people there. It's like, you know, you're just getting hooked up on things. Like, you know, here I am like in between, you know, our VIP day and doing this video, I, I hit up, you know, Donna, um, our customer care gal. And I was like, hey, can you book a flight really quick? And, you know, heading to Florida and stuff to meet with Kevin Harrington from Shark Tank, Ray Higdon, what up? And uh, and also Russ Whitney. So so I'm like, literally talked to her for like 20 seconds. And then AJ's like, oh dude, well, uh, why don't I just have my girlfriend see if I can get you, like, you know what I mean? So yeah. like you have, your girlfriend works for Hilton and cause the hotel's like 300 bucks a night. And he's like, yeah, see if I can hook you up. Yeah, Bam. you got it, boom. Connections right there. Brotherly love, you know? Boom. Jellyfish. So. We know that, you know, connections and stuff is huge, right? But I think I want to drive home a little deeper that Twitter is more than just connections. Let's tie this to revenue, right? So I want, I want you to share just what's possible on and why they should be on Twitter. Because for me, I've been a Facebook marketing guy forever. So this is like Kate Buck is a Twitter expert and there's going to be people that are going to be falling off their chairs thinking about Unsworth being involved in Twitter now because... I've always just done Facebook. Absolutely. I just didn't have enough time. But um, so so give us that high level, like what's possible from profits, what's possible Absolutely. for opt-ins and building yeah. a business. So I don't care about if we have 80,000 followers. It doesn't mean anything to me, right? Because yeah. it all comes back to, again, profits. Sure. And then how do we get profits? Well, we have to build our list. Yeah. How do we build our list? We have to have people looking at it and then we have to have an enticing offer. Yeah. So if we come like big overview, we have to come back, what's the stance? What's the mm -hmm. huge problem that we're solving in the marketplace? It always yeah. comes down to three things. You're either solving money, mm -hmm. you're either solving something in the relationship sector, or you're solving something in the health sector. Regardless right. of what industry, and it's one of those things, three things, and by the way, yeah. it all has a cascading effect on all, all of those work together. Yeah. So once we figure out, okay, here's the problem, then we have to figure out what is like that big, big, huge obstacle that I'm really solving? Mm -hmm. And then creating that lead magnet, whether this is audio, whether this is video, whether this is ebooks or regular sure. books, like that thing that we can give for people, law mm -hmm. of reciprocity, we're giving, showing up and say, hey, you have this problem, yeah. I have this thing to help you. Yeah. And then we have that package and position on the site where you have a nice opt-in video or a good headline and then mm -hmm. the offer. Okay. And now we gotta get people to it. Cool. Right, so people have been using Facebook ads to do that. So basically, what you're describing that whole process right there is, it's just modern marketing, right? Yes, absolutely. So, so basically, in the old days, it's like you'd 
you'd run an ad and then you'd sell something and boom. And really what you just described is, is what a lot of us online market, marketers call is just a funnel. So right. you, you've got your industry, whatever your niche is, what's valuable or the problem you're solving for exactly. your clients. So what's your free giveaway or yeah. lead magnet as we'd exactly. love to refer to it. And so once you have that, you can collect those leads, build a list, and then now for Twitter, you're saying that this is the best way to drive traffic Absolutely. into it. Okay. So, because like even if you're using content, you could create a good subject line, right? Yep. Or a good tweet using some type of good subject line yep. or headline, and then hashtag it with, let's say if you're working in the entrepreneur space, so it would be hashtag entrepreneur, hashtag business, hashtag marketing, hashtag success. Yep. Those, the hashtags are like the keywords, like within sure. Google, but it's like the keywords within Twitter, so people can monitor and find the conversations that are relevant for the information they're looking for. Yeah. Right. So if they then if you have the nice enticing headline for the entrepreneur, you're using hashtag entrepreneur. They find it within the feed. They like it. They click the link, and it takes them to the landing page. Okay. They should then opt in. But one of the strategies I like doing is I like you know going in not only creating great content that generates traffic, mm -hmm. but if your profile is set up in a way where you have this is who I help, this is how I help them, and so why it matters. So when people are coming in and you're following people, you're connecting with people, they're like, yeah. well, who is this Nick Unsworth guy? God. Yeah. When they, they, they click on the link, they yeah. go to your profile, they can see very quickly. You what think, I do. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we tell them you know, who you help, how you help them, and they're like, this is interesting. They click on lifeonfire.com, sure. then they can come, and then they can opt in. So that's a great point, I think, for you guys, you know, for you to make sure that your about section is yes. very clear, very obvious, because if they have to think about what you do, if you're being too cutesy with like your tagline or whatever that is, then if there's any mystery to what it is that you do, absolutely cut it. Yeah. You gotta make it simple. Like yeah. sometimes we always want to be, you know, we wanna make it seem so cool, like how yeah. we're explaining it. It's like, um, life after eight weeks, my man O'Neill, um, you know, that, it's, it's an awesome course name, and I was just thinking about it. It just popped in my head, first thing that popped in my head. But, like, that course is, um, and Michael O'Neill is a phenomenal podcaster. The guy's crushing it, and yeah. he's using yeah, a Twitter yeah. strategy. And the name of the course is super cool, but in my head, I'm thinking, like, what if you're not in the podcast industry? You don't know what it means for after eight weeks. You don't right. know that that's when New and Noteworthy ends, and yeah. then that's when you have to start being, you know, right. you need to market your podcast on your own. So all that, so that name implies you've got to know a lot of stuff. Right. And so the more you can move away from jargon, the more that you can, um, you know, make your stuff super obvious. Even if it's not cool or it's like, I would rather, I take clients all the time, we'll take some really creative off the wall name and we bring it back to tweet for profits. Oh, exactly. Simple, because at the end of the day, no one wants to, you know, we didn't hire AJ to, to work with us um, and, and to help us with our Twitter strategy for following and yeah. for creating and pushing content and all that stuff. It really was, you know, we're paying you X Absolutely. and we're, you know, bringing in Y, you know, and that needs to be, you know, a positive return on investment or else we wouldn't do it. Exactly. And that's what's so cool about, you know, what you're doing and, yeah. and how you're helping people is because it is about that positive return on investment. So that's the thing is make sure the about is super clear and very obvious what you do it, to the point where if you picture on a billboard and you're flying down the road doing 75 and someone just looks at your about, as if it was on a billboard. Do they get it? They just know what you do. Or if you go to a networking meeting, it's like we're at an event, people always, you ask them what they do and it's like, uh, uh, <laughs> it's all over the place. You know, clean that up, make it very simple. And so as far as profits go, um, I just think that one of the things that I just, you know, someone's thinking, all right, all right this is kind of cool. Like I, I right. dig what, you know, what AJ's saying about some of these strategies, you can network, you can, you can drive traffic Absolutely. to, and build your email list, but what about money? You know, what's what's a high level possibility? You know, can you use Twitter and you know build up an income stream from it? You know, by getting enough leads to come in. Yeah. So you definitely can, depending on what your funnel is, right? Yeah. Just because it comes back to like the yeah. funnel, like if you just have the lead magnet, but then you have no follow up. Like what what is like the thing of business? Fortune is in the follow up, right? Yeah. That's like the foundation of sure. of sales and of business. Fortunes in the fo or follow up, whatever. Yeah, okay. fortunes in the follow-up. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. So, okay, so if we have people opting in for lead magnet, if you have no follow-up, well, then you're not going to get profits. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn how to think through and learn to think like a master marketer and think, well, what is my campaign sequence? Okay, so here's a lead magnet. What's my overall end offer? Yeah. Is it coming into a session with me? Is it coming into a buying a book? Is it coming into buying a product? Is it sure. like what is it? And then how can I train that person to transaction to overcome the objections, yeah. et cetera, to then get the call to action? 
So then yeah. we just have to add the traffic piece, which is why we're following people, sure. why we're creating content, why we're running ads to people. Sure. But I've also had people connect with me on Twitter and literally become $1,500 clients. Wow. They just, they read the profile. They're like, dude, I have to have you. Like, because it's set up in a way that says yeah. you do X, which sure. I help at that time it said, I help women create online programs and products and build a global following, I think, or something okay. like that. I don't remember, something like that. Yeah. So they're like, this is exactly what I need. We set it up a, a call. It was a Skype call, but we just did it over mm -hmm. the phone because I was traveling. Yeah. Boom, $1,500 client. Bam. Yeah, and so overall, I think at the end of the day, no matter where we're spending our energy marketing, there's always two things. So you have your lead magnet or your funnel, your Absolutely. offer, and that's one piece, and you have to you know, get good at that. If you're gonna get 1,000 leads from Twitter, but you don't have a place for them to go or something for them to buy, exactly. obviously you can't monetize. And so the, it, what I like about Twitter is it's no different than Facebook. You know, in the in the past, I would always, you've got a really simple offer. Mm -hmm. You know, I would highly recommend doing a webinar because a webinar is a way where you can teach someone something, add value, and then you sell your products and services at the end after you've already hooked them up. Mm -hmm. So they'll love you for the free content, they've gotten value out of it, and if they choose to take the next step, that that's their choice to buy it, right? So whether it's a webinar, if you have a brick and mortar business, whether it's a coupon, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one call with right, you, exactly. in any scenario, it's setting up that lead magnet and then, you know, whether it's Facebook ads or Facebook marketing, or in this case, Twitter marketing, the cool thing is you can drive enough traffic to, to build up a significant income. You know, something to, to be said about that, um, I think about Michael O'Neill, who I just mentioned, you know, and I ask him over and over about what is the number one um, uh, leverage point as far as your marketing goes for your podcast and he's like Twitter yeah Twitter you know it's helped him get past 200,000 downloads Absolutely. in a month and that's staggering and you know the reason why I'm so excited about this for you guys is because you know we're diving in heavily with with Twitter with AJ seeing the results with Michael O'Neill to the tune of you know north of ten thousand dollars a month you know he's using Twitter to drive enough revenue where the podcast is getting that many downloads and now he's getting sponsorship revenue you know, in our case is we're taking the Twitter traffic, we're driving the Twitter traffic basically to come in to check out our show too, Absolutely. right? Which is awesome. So if you guys come from Twitter, what up? But also on top of that, um, we're taking that, we're using a webinar. So we're, you know, teaching stuff. And shoot, we've got a webinar coming up. Tweetforprofits.com. Exactly. Boom, hop on board. And at the end of the day, you know, we're going to have a course together, you yeah. know, and, and AJ is going to teach and walk through all these strategies. We're just going to provide one-on-one -on -one time and just really amazing, ridiculous offer so that anyone that says, you know what, I think that these guys are right. We need to be on Twitter. We need to, to get traffic because it's a great lucrative opportunity to grow your business. Then at the end of the day, you can do it all yourself or you can have a guy like this that can help you and literally build it with you and do, you know, do your design and, and make your life easy. You know, so that's super cool. So that I just want to really drive home that point that, you know, we're you know we brought you on because the opportunity is here. So the crazy thing is, two three years ago, um, in my opinion, I never dove into Twitter from a marketing perspective because I didn't. It wasn't in my opinion. I don't think it was a, not nearly as lucrative as it is now. And I think you know that's being validated by Gary Vaynerchuk, where it's like, dude, Twitter's the number one network to be marketing on now. Um, you know, from our own experience, from friends like Michael O'Neill and John Lee Dumas and where they're seeing the action from Twitter. So every network has this tipping point. And this is what's so crazy and exciting is that for Facebook hit critical mass and Facebook has been the place to be in market for a long, long time. And we still are crushing it with Facebook ads and we love it. But now with Twitter, this is becoming, this is, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if it's edging Facebook out just yet, but it's, it's getting there. And then the great thing is that Twitter advertising. Absolutely. You know, and that's something that AJ is, you're diving deep yeah. into. And every social network, there's a sweet spot. And the sweet spot for advertising is always when the network is trying to grow, right? right? So from a monetization standpoint, Facebook was one of the first big social networks to monetize their advertising. So what happens is they're trying to attract you, attract us as entrepreneurs and business owners to pour our money into their platform to advertise, right? And then Facebook had their IPO. So the cool thing is that there's that sweet spot for Facebook advertising so that two years ago, I was getting clicks for pennies. I built hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. of revenue with Facebook advertising because the traffic was so inexpensive, right? So that, that little sweet spot is amazing. Now, Facebook advertising is still amazing as it is, 
But what's cool is that we're finding with you diving into Twitter advertising is that as Facebook advertising is becoming more expensive because it's supply and demand, right? It's an auction based model. There's more people advertising on Facebook. Twitter is so new. People don't know about how to advertise there yet. So now to be you and myself and AJ right. and for us to advertise on Twitter when it's, when it's young like this, this is that sweet spot. And so I'm super excited because this is what we're proving out. This is what we're you know, testing for traffic in this. And I truly believe that the next year to two years, we're going to find that this is going to be like the glory days on Twitter advertising. And so I love that you're pioneering that. And so that's just another reason just to take Twitter really seriously because every network has that sweet spot. We saw it with Google and AdWords, you know, six years ago when people built up fortunes from that, you know, we saw it with Facebook advertising. Now it's Twitter. I think on deck might be YouTube and you know, right. coming. Yeah, that's yeah. coming too. Yeah. YouTube advertising is, is like, it's a coming of age, like yeah. the, the theme from like books, right? Um, so that's just another key thing. So just tell us what excites you about Twitter advertising and, um, and then we'll dive into some you know, some other marketing yeah. tips. One of my the most things that excites me about Twitter advertising is you can build a list within Facebook. Like you don't have to take them to a landing page. Mm -hmm. If you learn how to write a really good headline, yep. there's an option to run a Twitter ad where if they click it, right then and there, it has a little drop down menu where they yep. can put in their information, opt in. Right like, then and there. Right there. Dude. You know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I love it, I love it. And you know, Twitter ads to build up a following, Twitter ads to what promote tweets. Absolutely. And you can kind of do like what Facebook does where you can target, you know, like Facebook, you target yep. the, if they like this, then show my ad to that. Mm. So pretty much if they're following this person, then show this promoted tweet to this person. Sure. So again, the targeting is there. As long yep. as we do the preliminary work, which is the foundation, the problem that we're solving, really honing in on our niche and our market, yep. then we can literally hone down in on those people. Okay, okay. And so, yeah, we'll definitely be bringing oh, more. And the other thing, yeah, yeah. I forgot, yeah. is you, could, um, you can target like keywords. Mm -hmm. So like how to lose weight. You okay. can literally just target the people in real time yep. and have the promoter tweet show up to the, that keyword. So imagine that. Someone is interested in losing weight and then, you know, that's what's so cool about advertising in, in this new age environment is that we can target so specifically, much more so than we ever could. Yeah. This never been a time in humanity when advertising could be go from this, from commercials that are broad, right. newspapers that are broad, billboards are broad. And now it's like we can target on Facebook women that are yeah. engaged, that live in a city that like the biggest loser. Yeah. Well, I think this is like or on, on Twitter, you know, yeah. specific keywords, specific demographics, everything. Yeah. Well, you know? I think this comes back to our mindset too. Like people think, oh, I'm being too marketing and being too salesy. It's like, mm -hmm. no, you, my friend, are the bridge for the person. Like this yeah. person is tweeting. They have this they problem. It. They need yeah. it. They want it. You're, you're coming in and giving. You're the messenger. You're the messenger. Yeah. I mean, essentially, that's the beautiful thing. About that's a it. really good way to look at it. Someone has a problem, and that's how we need to always think as marketers. Yeah. If someone's got a problem, then you're just going to be the person that's going to come in. To liberate them. I mean, you're there. Twitter to liberation. Freaking, there you go. <laughs> what your product name? Yeah, exactly. Twitter the liberators. Liberation. We're going to have like soccer jerseys. The liberators, number 10. we will just be skins. <laughs> yeah. Skins. Um, all right, well, cool. So let's let's drop a couple. Um, so I, wanna, I want you to share some information about someone that doesn't have a lot of time, let's just hypothetically say that you're like, man, this sounds cool. I like the Twitter stuff, but I don't have a lot of time. How can I have an effective Twitter strategy if I don't have time to do all the following and unfollowing and stuff? Paid advertising is going to be your way to go. Okay. You know, so I mean, because you could just run, find out exactly who your target market is going to be. Sure. You could run that promoted tweet. I wouldn't say do it from ground zero. Yeah. You're going to need some tweets there. You need some content. It'd be like, we, you know, go back to Facebook, for instance, and you started a brand new page. Sure. You wouldn't tell somebody, oh, let's go run a like campaign right now, even yeah. though they don't have any content. They don't have sure. the custom, you know, uh, the banner on, on, in a nice, pro like there's preliminary foundational work that's be sure. set up. So I'd tell somebody, make sure you have a nice cover photo. Make sure you have a nice human profile picture, sure. a good, powerful bio where you're going, this is who I help, this is how I help them, and this is why it matters. Yeah. Have your nice URL with the lead magnet there, and then have some content, you know. Do like 20 tweets or something like that. That's really adding value, and then come into doing some of that uh, promotional, you know, running the promoted tweets to the peoples. Mm. Okay. Awesome, 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 awesome. So what about, um, if you're gonna drop a couple tips as far as, all right, so let's just picture that, you know, they come on board, they start, um, and you know, I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people that are already advanced on Twitter, but yeah. from a marketing perspective, um, someone that comes on board, they're just getting started, they're starting to network, they're curating content, they're sharing stuff, they're interacting, 
shoot a couple direct messages. What's a, what's a, a tip or a strategy and how to, um, without using paid advertising, yeah. your most effective or one of your most effective strategies and how to, to get leads from Twitter? Yeah, so one of the most effective ways is going to be, I know it sounds crazy, but to go just follow your target market. Mm -hmm. So let's say if your target market was Marie Forleo people, mm -hmm. to go in there and connect and spend five minutes, 10 minutes a day connecting with those real people, like following them, because then yeah. that's going to generate the awareness to your profile, mm -hmm. and then they're going to visit the site and see what you have going on. That's going to be one way. The other way would be using some software like writetag.com. Right? Okay. R-I-T-E tag, T-A-G.com. It's, it's free. They have a paid version, free version. But you yeah. use the, the free version just to analyze your, your hashtags. Mm -hmm. So you know if they're no good, if they're good, if they're great. So you're making sure that you're in each tweet that you're tweeting out that you're using hashtag entrepreneur. You're using mm -hmm. hashtag uh, holistic health. Whatever that sweet spot is for you. Yeah. So you're staying consistently in the minds of that feed. Mm -hmm. And that's establishing you and your message kind of as that, oh, they're always here, right? They're always that go-to person. So it sounds like in that strategy um, that that is something that someone might be searching for something. Yep. So Absolutely. basically with the Absolutely. use of hashtags, it's like, well, I'm really interested in uh, podcasts or, yeah. you know, who are other entrepreneurs on Twitter? So if I search for hashtag entrepreneur, anything related to that that has hashtag entrepreneur yeah. pops up. And then you're saying if you have that in yours, then you pop up Absolutely. and they can find you yeah. that way. Because I think a lot of people use hashtags like just for fun, like okay. humor, right? Yep. Like if you were had a green, I had the ginger, what do we have? Garlic ginger shot yeah, We had. Something. I got a whole bunch of juice this morning and uh, no live, no deer. Like I didn't, <laughs> you know, I didn't, I didn't kill anything for breakfast like this guy would, you know. I didn't go out and spear any fish, but um, I went to this place called the mad beat it's super cool and they've yeah. got they've got names so we drank what's called the queen uh it was called green latifah okay green latifah and like master p like they have this like cool yeah. gangster name for the juice the so vampire killer we yeah, we had so we had four juice shots they were like literally we're like lining them up in shot glasses yeah. we had like one that was garlic lime we had all kinds of stuff so um but basically uh those juice shots were amazing but i did not kill them um unfortunately like the yeah, hunting. you did. You plucked them. All the chlorophyll just <laughs> fell to the ground. <laughs> just getting weird now. Um, all right, cool. So strategy-wise, so we got we got the um, sounds like the hashtag strategy, strategy yeah. and sounds like following and unfollowing. And for technology resources for these guys, we've got you said right tag. Yeah, right tag. Um, anything else that you're using to manage all this yeah, action? I use Hootsuite. There's okay. other people using different platforms. Your choice. Pick which one you like. I'm familiar okay. with, with Hootsuite. I used to use the free version, and sure. it allows me to monitor everything that yeah. I need. You know, my, my feed. I don't even look at my feed. I look at my sent tweets, my direct messages, my inbox, outbox, yeah. my mentions. If I have a list, I can manage the list all in there and stay current. Yeah. So I use Hootsuite also to schedule. Another tip for people to stay like in the news feeds at the right time yeah. is the auto schedule of Hootsuite, which is free, by the way. Mm -hmm. If you auto schedule them, somehow Hootsuite knows when to send it out to get the most exposure. Okay. So if you'll, in the morning, you can just write auto schedule, write auto mm -hmm. schedule, write auto schedule. And it's going to pump them out throughout the day. So you're going to get the most eyeballs into your looking uh, at your stuff. Very cool. Very cool. Now, I do want to just say, um, Mr. Michael O'Neill. Yeah. Have you guys done any collaborating? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So um, I just want to give a shout out because I know that he's crushing on Twitter. So Michael O'Neill from the Solopreneur Hour podcast. If you guys haven't checked that out, this is kind of like doing a sponsored read, it is, even though I don't yeah. have any sponsors stuff. But um, Michael O'Neill is a boss. The guy is not only just a great personal friend, but um, he's just his podcast is awesome. So I think I, love... I was on episode seventy one. I think. Okay. I think. I think it may be 71. Well, check that out because Michael O'Neill is a boss and he's crushing and loving Twitter. So you guys want to see what he's up to on Twitter and also check out his coaching programs too because the guy is phenomenal. And I think his course, uh, Life After Eight Weeks, um, it's something that we are getting some coaching from him as far as how to keep our show lively and, uh, and, and really how to... Um, you know, the best practices to keeping the shows high up in the chart, you know, so that's super cool. So check out Michael O'Neill. Um, we're at about, I think we're somewhere in the range, roughly about an hour mark. So yeah. before we wrap up, any last tips for these guys? The only tips I would have for you guys is to figure out what is your stance and then buy into it that you are literally born to liberate somebody. 
And by you not choosing to share your message, by you not choosing to learn how to master marketing, by you not choosing to learn how to master sales, you are choosing the opportunity to allow those people who want your stuff, who you are born to lead, to completely just fall into destruction. And so wake up, lead them, you know, use Twitter to connect with them. Be the freaking liberator. Let's go. Twitter liberator. <laughs> Um, so cool guys, and I think what's going to be so much fun is uh, we have an upcoming webinar we're doing together. Um, and so AJ is going to be sharing just, a, I would call it an advanced, would you yeah. say an advanced version of this training. We're going to be going on screen. So, you know, you guys have a lot of times, um, I mean, you guys, I, I love connecting with you via the show. Uh, we do, I really love the live uh, webinars because yeah. it's just, a, it's different. It's going from, you know, seeing us here, you know, on the video and hearing our voices to experiencing hanging with us live. And so that's one of the, you know, the things I just love to do as a business coach and entrepreneur is, is connecting live in these webinars. We give away prizes. We're going to have a, it's going to be an experience hanging with us that night. We're going to go off and we're going to have lots of cool prizes and yeah. things we're going to give away. And also you're going to learn some really advanced Twitter strategies. So this is kind of a little bit of an appetizer. I, I really hope that you got a lot out of the session, you know, not just, you know, hearing about how this guy, you know, kills what he eats, but how, you know, Twitter is really something that can help liberate you and help you live the dream and, and set your life and business on fire because out of everything that's going on, I just hear about Michael O'Neill's success, Gary Vaynerchuk, personal conversations. You know, Twitter is where it's at, guys. You know, and AJ working, you know, and, and helping us to manage our Twitter and things are popping off and happening. We're getting more traffic to the tune of yeah. hundreds of thousands of people seeing our stuff now, which is so amazing. So we want you guys to get in the know and uh, join us live. So it's... Uh, tweetforprofits.com tweetforprofits.com and uh, we're going to be live again lots of prizes going to be really cool so tweets for profits come off you know so if you guys are hearing us you know on your iPod or in the car on the go um, take the time to really join us live because we're going to make it really worth it for you so this is one of the first webinars we're sharing and promoting on the podcast so I'm excited it's going to be a big old event so tweetforprofits.com and uh, also definitely check out lifeonfire.com to connect Absolutely. with AJ. What's your Twitter handle? AJ Amix. AJ Amix. Real simple. A-J-A-M-Y-X. The Y. Don't forget the Y. Yeah. And so, so connect with us on Twitter, AJ Amix, and then also Life on Fire TV. And I'm at Nick Gunsworth as well. And uh, tweetforprofits.com. Join us live. We're going to rock your world. It's going to be awesome. So we'll see you guys there. Cheers. Peace. I'm here to help you set your life on fire.